Increasing the productivity of agricultural water use in Kenya is a national priority given the country's low water endowment, growing population and changing climate. Expanding the use of modern irrigation technology such as drip and sprinkler systems will be fundamental to achieving water productivity because of the potential for such systems to increase yields relative to water withdrawals. Currently, modern irrigation systems play a very limited role in sub-Saharan Africa's agricultural sector. Food production in the region remains almost entirely rain-fed and only 2% of the total cultivated area is irrigated. This is according to the UN's Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO. However, in some parts of the continent, the situation is changing. Meet Martin Kamau from Moranga County, a young innovator who developed an interest in inventing simple, cheap and effective technologies meant to cut production costs for small-scale farmers while he was still in college. After I was through in the college, I wasn't in a position to get access, direct job. So from that, uh, when I was in school, I used to do innovations. Since I, in my second year, that is when I, I after a lot of research, I realized that the technology, the rate at which technology is rising, I can also try to join and come up with my, my own innovations. So after, in my second year, this is when now I, I joined robotic classes from, my, from the Kate Technical. And from there, I started to do my innovations. And the very first one that I started with was a basic, that is the home automation. And I used, uh, instead of bulbs, I used the uh, LEDs. Then after that, I decided now, because I have the skills, let me try and come up with uh, the main one, the real one that can function. So, uh, and it functioned. I, I, I tried and tested it. It was using the Bluetooth module, whereby you can control your home with a, with a mobile phone, and it will work. So basically, I've been doing some researches. Uh, at least I tried to come up to know the problem that are facing the, the community or the world in general. And you find that there are so many problems and in us we have the solutions that we can solve the problems. Like when I was thinking about the farming sector, you find that farmers, they, are, they have large farms and some of them, you find that when they are purchasing the, the gadgets for farming, they are very expensive at times. So I decided that I can innovate my own system whereby it will be fit for every farmer, that is you and me, the common monarchy, that is in short. So through that, I, the, the project that about the farming system, I, I, I innovated it. That is when I was going for innovations in Dubai Stadium. So we came up with my good friend, that is by his name, Deno. So he was doing the farming water, but he was not doing the automation part. So I requested him, is it possible we can combine our minds and come up with the automated system whereby now the system now will be fully automated. And yes, he agreed. So we have been doing together for like almost this is the sixth month and the, the system has been doing well. Armed with just ambition and of course skill, Martin was able to add value to his partner's invention, which are these multi-story gardens from Farming Wanda. Instead of watering the crops manually using a horse pipe or a can, the drip irrigation system, he explains, is meant to be operated remotely using a mobile phone from any location of the world as long as there is mobile phone connectivity and an internet connection. The name of the project is an automatic irrigation system. Okay. Yeah. So what does this system do? The system, its work is very simple. I have used a soil moisture sensor, Andre, and a small mobile phone, that is Cambri Camuizi, if you have seen it. So the idea here I was trying to come up with is, instead of designing a very complicated system, why can't I come up with a simple system whereby it will be able to be controlled by every farmer, be it our grandpas or grandmas, young generation, everybody will have to use it. So the system uses a mobile phone, and a soil moisture sensor. 
whereby the soil moisture sensor measures the amount, amount of moisture present in the soil. So if the moisture if is too dry, it has a display, so it will show you the content of the moisture. If it is too dry, you just take your mobile phone, you call the Kamuri Kamuis that, is, that have been incorporated in the system, and the moment now if the moisture content is too dry, when you make a phone call, the system will automatically trigger itself and start doing the irrigation in your farm. You must be wondering what Martin means when he insists that the system isn't complex after that explanation. So, here we go again, this time for the not-so-tech survey. Uh, instead of using the processor that you go for to buy in the shops, for me I decided it is wise. What if I try and design my own microprocessor? So, uh, in the system, I've designed my own integrated microprocessor. So from this one, now you wrote a program with what you, what you want the system to do. So for me, I decided now, I want if the moisture is at this level, the system should do this. If the moisture is high, the system should stop. If the moisture is low, the system should turn on and start doing the irrigation system. So the system has got a microprocessor, the system has got a, a relay module, that's uh, for triggering the pump. The system has got a, um, a mobile phone. So this mobile phone, it's not just a mobile phone. I have designed a circuit for it. It's not just that uh, it is going direct to the microprocessor. So there is a circuit, a certain circuit that is communicating with the mobile phone. Then the signal, the mobile phone signal, signal is being sent to the, to the microprocessor then the microprocessor now communicates with the soil moisture sensor. So if now the moisture content is at th this level, see now the three of them, they are communicating, and actually even the LED, it is even communicating. It has to display the moisture level at the limit that uh, it has reached. Yeah, so it has got only those four parts. Only four readily available components have been used to build the systems and of course the program which he has coded himself. Once installed in your farm, Martin adds that he always gives a crash course to farmers on how to translate the readings displayed on the device. What happens in this system? The soil moisture sensor, is, it reads the analog value. And from the basics of electronics or engineering, a, an electronics device is like a resistor. It is, it is measuring the resistance of the soil. So a resistance value like this one, it measures from 0 to 1023. So you see now, if you go to the farm and, or the farmer and you tell him now the moisture is 500, what do you mean? What are these values for? But I believe everybody knows the degrees Celsius. Everybody, including the children, the the old ones. So I decided now in my program I have to do something to map these values in form of a percentage. So it reaches to a, I give it a limit from zero to a hundred percent. Sorry, to a hundred degrees of which it is a percentage. So if I come to your farm, you see, you see now this is Kiambu. There is Moranga, there is Mabasa, and the soils are very different. So if I come in your farm to install the system, I have now to go to the field, where do you want it to be installed? If now I come to your farm, like in Mombasa, the soil there, I guess it is sandy, sandy soil. Yeah, it is very sandy. So when you come to Kiabu, Moranga, the soil is red, reddish, or brown soil. So what happens, this sensor now, it will be in a position now to identify if this moisture, it is measuring this type of uh, moisture soil, I have now to gain percentage of soil dryness. Will it be from 20 and above? If I come to Kiabu, is it the, the soil begins to get dry at 80%? So those are the values that I personally come and correct. So I have to come to your farm and tell you. So your farm must have been receiving a moisture content. If when it gets, when you, when you go to the display and, and lead, the values are 80% and below. What you usually do, you turn on the pump. Or else, if now that one is tiresome, you know, someone will ask, now will I be keeping on turning off, off, off? I can feed the system automatically. By automatic means, 
when you put the sensor in the moisture or in the soil, you forget. So maybe you put a CCTV camera to monitor, maybe there are some rivers where the pump have freakage, um, uh, the drips on the pipes have freakages. So if the moisture is 50%, the system will automatically turn on. So this one now, you will not control it, you will not touch it. So for your work, you'll be coming maybe in the evening or in the morning before you go to work, you look at your shaba, it's okay, then you go. Inexpensive, simple gravity, drip and pump sprinkler systems for horticultural crops are extremely profitable investments. Their numbers are growing fast in high potential areas of Kenya where commercialization of horticultural crops for domestic and international markets is in full swing. However, the spread of these technologies to cover the most of the estimated potential irrigation areas are limited by physical conditions and increasing competition for water. Techniques focused on keeping water in the field, distributing it more efficiently, achieving better soil moisture retention are typically less expensive than management strategies or systems modifications. Field practices are techniques focused on keeping water in the field, distributing it more effectively, achieving better soil moisture retention. Let's take a short break now. When we come back, Martin will tell us how much it will set you back to install such a system in your farm, and of course, how much you will save once installed. <laughs> 